welcome back to my youtube channel my name is Sheila in today's video we are going to be learning how to make the Coco Chanel inspired bomber jacket this is a project that I've been working on for weeks and uh, right now I'm bringing you the tutorial and um, for the materials you'll need yarn and for the yarn I'm using a three ply chunky yarn called seal and uh, the colors are black and white for most of you who have worked on my Coco Chanel inspired projects you know that I usually love using black and white but you can use any two contrasting colors it could be yellow and black it could be dark purple and yellow whatever you choose to use that's really up to you and then uh, you'll need a measuring tip I'll be showing you how to measure to get an exact fitting like my bomber jacket since we are going to be making a demonstration then um, a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook a darning needle to weave in your ends and a pair of scissors so that's all for the materials so you're going to grab your yarn actually your darker color You're going to start with your darker color and for me the darker color is black and you're going to first take a measurement from your shoulder to shoulder to shoulder so just stretch it across your shoulders and get that measurement for mine it's um 18 inches from one shoulder to the other is 18 inches so you're going to add 10 inches to your measurement that you've got so now that i've got 18 inches for my shoulder to shoulder measurement i'm going to make a chain of 18 inches plus 10 which will be 28 inches so whatever measurement you got for your shoulder to shoulder measurement just go ahead and add 10 inches to it so I'm going to make a chain the demonstration is going to be a chain of 20 chains but for the actual cardigan I made a chain of 60 so you're going to start off with your chain 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 and 20 so this is going to be a demonstration first of all this pattern is going to be showing you how to work this pattern this uh, tutorial is going to be work showing you how to work this pattern and at the same time you're going to learn how to use the hound's tooth stitch without carrying along the or the um, second color you don't have to carry it along because I find this a bit shabby I think I've tried it several times and it hasn't worked for me so I don't like the method so in this tutorial i'm going to give you an easier method of how to go about the hound's tooth stitch without carrying along the second color but also achieving a very neat um edging for your cardigan so you can see this this is the edging i think it's pretty neat and this is the other side you don't have loose ends to keep tying around and then yeah this is how it looks like so after your desired chain we are going to start something else let me focus a bit okay so you're going to chain one more so make sure you have an odd number for whatever chains that you choose to use so in my actual cardigan I did a total of 60 chains plus uh, 
plus one which was 61 so in this demonstration I'm using 20 chains plus one which is 21 chains go into the second chain from the hook not this one but this one and place a single crochet double crochet into the next stitch single crochet into the next chain double crochet into the next chain so we are going to keep on alternating between single crochet and double crochet all the way across and what you have to note is that you should end your row with a double crochet so we started with a single crochet make sure you end your row with a double crochet that's the rule so I'm almost coming to the end of my first row and I have one more chain left and I'll go in there with my double crochet so that marks the end of row one and for row two we're going to do something else so we've ended with our double crochet you're going to pull this loop remove your hook and then introduce your white color So make a slip knot and turn your work around. So turn it to the opposite side and you see this stitch we ended with a double crochet so in that double crochet go into it and attach your white yarn. So I've attached my white yarn on the double crochet that ended our first row. And you're going to go into the same stitch with a single crochet for those who have worked this pattern before you know that we keep alternating between single crochet and double crochet and wherever there's a single crochet you place a double crochet and wherever there's a, a double crochet you place a single crochet so since we ended our row with a double crochet that means the very first stitch of our second row is a single crochet so you place the single crochet on the double crochet then double crochet into the single crochet below single crochet in the single cr in the double crochet double crochet in the single crochet and keep alternating between that all the way across I feel like if you get the first stitch right then you just keep alternating between the two stitches I don't think you'll go wrong as long as your previous row was right so keep alternating between single crochet and double crochet all the way across okay so I'm single crocheting in the second last stitch but make sure every row ends with a double crochet I told you that so double crochet in that single crochet at the end of the row scratch that so um I'm correcting something I'm not saying every row should end with a single with a double crochet it's every single crochet should get a double crochet because uh, our rows are going to keep turning around we are not going to go with the same flow the whole time so just go with the flow of the stitches below if you have a single crochet place a double crochet and if you have a double crochet place a single crochet so this is done and at the end of this row we have a double crochet you're going to pull up that loop and abandon it and remember the loop that we left behind we have this black loop that we left behind here you're going to go into the single crochet here that single crochet that started this row and go into it and grab this loop make sure your hook is inside that black loop then you're going to pull the black string like this 
like that and then pull it through the single crochet I'm pulling it to this side because we are going to be working going to this side so you're going to chain up three so since this is a single crochet the very first stitch of the white was a single crochet that means it's supposed to get a double crochet and this is the beginning of the row that means we are going to chain up three and that will count as our double crochet I hope you get it and then you're going to go into the next stitch which is a double crochet and place a single crochet double crochet in the next single crochet single crochet in the next double crochet so at this point you can see the long stitches and the short stitches so every long stitch gets a short stitch which is a single crochet and every short stitch which is a single crochet gets a long stitch which is a double crochet so I hope I'm explaining it right so go all the way across placing your stitches accordingly but you should also keep in mind that the number of stitches remains the same across each and every row make sure you don't decrease or you don't decrease you don't increase or decrease at any one point we want the same number of stitches for each and every row okay we are coming to the end so I'm placing my double crochet in the second last stitch and remember we ended our previous row with a double crochet this is a double crochet so you'll go into it with a single crochet and that marks the end of the third row you're going to pull up this loop leave it and then turn to the opposite side because it's going to be worked to this side place your hook in that single crochet which you've just placed and grab the white loop the moment it's around your hook you're going to pull your yarn but don't pull it tightly just leave enough room for it to go through this row without um, putting a lot of tension on the edge and since this is a single crochet that we ended with you're going to uh, chain up three which will count as a double crochet so this chain three means we've already placed a double crochet on the single crochet on this black single crochet then single crochet in the next double crochet double crochet in the next single crochet and repeat that all the way across so you can see how I'm playing around with the houndstooth stitch without carrying along the second color or without cutting the yarn because those loose ends can really get irritating and sometimes they make your work look shabby so I just found a way to eliminate them so we are coming to the end of row 4 and this is how our work looks like and so for row 4 we have a double crochet here which was a chain 3 so you're going to just go on top of it and place a single crochet because every double crochet gets a single crochet so you single crochet there pull up a loop so you pull through this loop and leave it hanging go back to the loop that we left behind the one that's supposed to start row five and this is a double crochet here this is a chain three which counts as a double crochet and what i want to do is to go into that space below the chain three and grab my black yarn give it a tug and pass it through that um, pass it below the chain three space chain one and single crochet in that very space so it's like the double crochet has gotten a single crochet and then double crochet in the next single crochet then single crochet in the next double crochet and go all the way across so you can see how easy this uh, pattern is it's just um, 
alternating between the two stitches and also understanding what to do at what points at the edge. Okay, go all the way across. So we ended with a single crochet on row four. So we shall place a double crochet there. And that is the last stitch of row five. And since this is a double crochet, um, I want to point out something. This is a double crochet and this is a single crochet. And if you just pull that loop all the way up to this level, it's going to create those strings which we don't want. So when I get to a situation like this where I ended the previous row with a single crochet and this is a double crochet and there's a big distance between this and this, I'm going to chain up two on the white and leave that loop and turn my work and grab that weight through this uh, double crochet, the black double crochet. Chain one and place a single crochet in the same stitch. So we've placed a single crochet on the double crochet. But when you turn back behind, we tried to bring the weight up to the level that we wanted by chaining two and then continuing with the flow of the pattern. So we have our single crochet here, double crochet in the single crochet, single crochet in the double crochet and go all the way across your work with uh, the same exact pattern. So I'm ending my row with a double crochet, like that, and now um, you pull this loop and go back to the back. Go into the single crochet and grab this black loop, pull this yarn, and pull through. And since this is a single crochet, we're going to chain up three, which will count as a double crochet. And then single crochet in the next double crochet, double crochet in the next single crochet, and go all the way across. So this is the repeat of this uh, particular pattern. You're going to just have a lot of fun with this stitch as long as we don't have loose ends which I've eliminated in this uh, tutorial. So you can see how everything is coming out nicely and you're going to have the same exact thing going on at the back. So in most cases the hound's tooth stitch differs. One side is more white, the other side is more black. But in this approach you're having the same exact look on both ends so you have nothing to worry about you can just pick your favorite side and yeah you're going to go ahead and make this until you get the length of the sweater that you want so for me I did a total of um, 41 st 41 rows so I'm um, demonstrating with this I did a total of 41 rows and uh, it's 41 because uh, I wanted to end with the darker color on the edges so that's why I went to 41 it had to be 40 but 40 ends on white so I wanted my edges to be the darker color so I had to add a row which um, made it 41. So go ahead and work your stitches. 
your back panel until you get the length that you want so for the demonstration i'm going to continue working until i get a total of um 11 rows this is my demonstration so go ahead and work yours until the length that you want so now that i've shown you how to make the panels uh it's going to be literally the same exact approach for all the panels so i decided to introduce some papers to show the demonstration using paper instead of uh, the panels because i was running out of white yarn and i couldn't uh, send for more yarn at the moment so um we're going to label these panels on paper so this i told you i made a total of 60 chains that means we have 60 stitches across because this is the back panel this is the back panel and then um, we're going to do two front panels so I cut my my paper like this this is the front and this is the second front panel these two are going to fold over and come like this and to determine how to determine how wide your front panels should be you're going to get the number of stitches you have for your back panel so minus 60 minus 8 so whatever number you have minus 8 so mine is 52 and since we are going to have two front panels we are going to divide that number by 2 and we are going to get 26 so um, my front panels are going to be made of 26 stitches so you start your chain with a total of 27 because the, the extra chain is the turning chain so um, yeah my back panel is made of 60 chains plus one then my front panels are made of 26 chains 26 chains plus the turning chain of course so this is what we have these are the two front panels and in this gap i'm naming it eight stitches because we skipped eight stitches we eliminated eight stitches to get these numbers here so that's from here to here we have eight stitches in between and now you're going to determine how wide you want your sleeves to be so in order to know when you finish determining how big your sleeves are going to be for me I did a total of 40 stitches 40 chains and um, this is going to fold over like this and it will attach at this point you can see that that will be the sleeve this will be made of 40 stitches for me I did a bomber jacket for a small to medium so 40 stitches same applies to this side 40 stitches so if you're making your cardigan you will have a total of one two three four and five panels in total you have five panels one made of 60 chains the other one of 26 the other one of 26 the next one of 40 and the next one of 40 so two sleeves two front panels and one big back panel so that's the best way i could explain it so go ahead and do that and then i'll show you how to work on the ribbing for your sweater when we have everything ready so now that you know how to construct the body i'm going to be showing you how to make the ribbing for your uh, jacket so for the ribbing you're going to make a slip knot 
you're going to decide what color you want to make for your ribbing and for me I chose the darker color which is black and I chained 10 6 7 8 9 and 10 so I have my 10 chains here and I'm going to go into the second chain from the hook this one and place a single crochet and continue to single crochet all the way across so this ribbing is for one of the sleeves this is what I'm demonstrating right now because the sleeves have to have a ribbing on the wrist area so single crochet all the way across so that will bring me to a total of nine stitches all the way across and now um, we are going to do row two for row two you're going to chain up one and turn your work and go into the back loop back loop of each and every stitch with a single crochet so back loop only back loop single crochet and we are going to repeat this row until so let me point out a few things um, for the ribbing you're going to make a total of uh, so the sleeve is here and it has a total of 40 stitches across these are the 40 stitches across you're going to divide the number of stitches you have for your sleeve because I know the number of stitches varies um, 40 stitches divide by 2 and that will give me 20 20 stitches and that's the number that I'm going to consider for the number of rows that I make for my sleeve so I'm going to go ahead and make my sleeve until I have a total of 20 rows and this is how it looks like and now um, we are going to be attaching this ribbing effect, this ribbed uh, panel onto our sleeve. So let's see how that works. So after your last row of the ribbing, make sure you leave a very long strand and this point at this point we introduce our darning needle and we put through this um, this string that we have here so we're going to be attaching 20 20 rows of um, the ribbing onto 40 stitches so that means uh, this is half the number that we have here so I'm going to do this and this is the the foundation chain of my sleeve that's where I'm going to be attaching this ribbing so let's see the first row here the first row into that gap you'll be seeing gaps there's those big big gaps in between I'm going to attach it twice so that it's secure enough And then the next row, sorry, we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah, so we're going to just be attaching each and every row into the big gap. So by the big gap, I mean, um, let me try to focus here. There are those big gaps, you see them there. There's this one, and then there's this one. You'll see them, or um, every after one stitch, if the big gaps are not very obvious to you. So I'm going into the next, into the next big gap. And I'm, I'm just going to be attaching these stitches like this, the next row 
into the next just make sure you evenly distribute these rows onto the stitches that we have on the sweater but um, keep in mind that we intended to make fewer rows so that we can get a gathering around the sleeve so keep that in mind so your sleeve will look gathered up so if it doesn't that means you're making something wrong you can see this and you see what's left and what we have left all those stitches have to fit onto this uh, ribbing sorry So I'm finishing my very last row and I'm attaching these two together. These two, like two times. I've attached two times here. And this is what we have for our sleeve ribbing. You can see that it's all gathered in. And now you're going to fold it to the wrong side. So you're going to decide which side is the wrong side. Like that. You're going to fold it over. And you're going to start attaching this all the way across so before we do that we want to learn how to attach our sleeve to the actual sweater so I'm going to introduce the actual sweater So since this project is too big, you can see this, I can't record all of it on camera, but this is the front panel, this is the back panel, and it's folded over, and this is where the sleeve is supposed to sit, there. So I'm going to just do a quick demonstration, and then I'll go off camera to sew the, the pieces together. So this is my sleeve, and it's supposed to be placed at this point, there. So I've already attached the second sleeve and this is how it looks like. So to attach this one, make sure you left a very long string here. So uh, what we are going to do is we are going to open up this front panel so that we saw on, uh, we saw on the sleeve from the inside part of the sweater. I know the print may be disorganizing you right now, but try to follow with me. This is the sleeve folded over like this, because we want the, um, the joining part to be below our arm, not at the top. So we folded it over like this, and then this is where the sleeve is supposed to sit. And we are going to flip over the front panel like this, and we attach our sleeve from the inside so that we get a neater fitting on the outside so you're going to grab if you don't have a string you can always get another string to join to join with so we have this so you're going to count you have a total of 40 stitches all the way across that means you have 20 on this side and 20 at the back so we are going to count 20 rows down so we ended with our black row so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 and 20 so our 20th row is uh, white so this is where I'm going to be attaching So we're going to attach row to, to stitch. So the first stitch onto that 20th row. So I attach twice so that it's secure enough. And I'm, atta I'm attaching using black yarn. 
that's the color I decided to attach with then into the second stitch on the sleeve and into the second row which is the black row of the cardigan and we are going to keep doing this white black white just make sure you you're very very careful and you don't mismatch the stitches and the rows so that's what I'm going to do on the inside until I get done so on the outside this is what it looks like it's a bit neat so I'm going to go all the way around my work and when I get to the top here we have uh, you're just going to go all the way like from here onto the other side but joining using now the lower part of the sleeve so continue to join your sleeve onto the uh, the body of the cardigan until you put everything together So on the inside it's a bit not that neat but on the outside we don't see anything going on so that's what we want continue to do this until your sleeve is completely attached so we have our sleeve attached you can see the inside and when you turn it to the outside part this is what it looks like All the way to the back and now um, the next thing that we are going to do is to I've already joined this lower part so you're just going to join row to row aligning your rows together since we had the same exact number of rows for the back panel and the front panel you will just go onto the wrong side of your work and join row to row so that was my joining all the way up to the point where I wanted my sleeves to start from so we are still on the wrong side of our work and at this point we are going to pull through the sleeve to the wrong side to the actual wrong side and we are going to start joining the lower part of the sleeves here and this is very easy this is almost the same exact thing that we did down here we are joining row to row so you're going to get your black row here because we ended with black here we should have a black row here and a black row here and you're going to go into it and join make sure it's secure enough because the armpits have to be closed up then sorry you're going to be joining every white row to white row and then every uh, black row to black row that's all we are going to do for the sleeve the lower part of the sleeve black white black so just make sure you're joining uh, white to white and black to black that's all you have to be very careful because we have mixture of colors at the edge so this is what we have I'm just joining that all the way across to the end
so we are coming to the end of our sleeve and I'm at this point I'm, a, I'm joining the last black row to the black row and when you get here you're going to just be attaching each stitch on this side and to a stitch on this side so we are joining our ribbing so go into one of the stitches here So we had nine stitches so go ahead and join nine stitches together now we, we have the ribbing joined up this is what we have and now I'm going to turn my work to the right side and I show you how my sleeve has turned out because this was the wrong side of the sleeve okay so this is what we have this is how the sleeve looks like it's very small the the rib part of the sleeve and then this is the body of the sleeve that's how it looks like at the base this is almost going to be invisible because it's below your arm it's the hidden part of the sleeve and then when you go here you have that this is the armpit and then the sleeve is fully joined you're going to go ahead and do the same exact thing that you've done on this side onto the other side so for me I had already worked my second sleeve but since this was a demonstration for you you're not yet done with your second side so go ahead and work your second side and this is what you'll have your sleeves will be done at this point and now we're going to be working on the ribbing at the base of our sweater and I'm going to be showing you how so for the ribbing at the best we're going to be doing some calculations so the best is made of both the back panel and the two front panels because now we've joined them at this point we've joined the the front panels to the back panel so we have 60 chains here and we have 26 here and 26 here which makes a total of 60 plus 52 which is 2 and um, 11 so we have a total of 112 stitches all the way across our base um, jacket so we're going to divide this 112 into 2 and we shall get 56 so not this number I've circled it and then divide 56 by 2 and we are going to get um, 28 so we are going to get this number here which is 56 plus 28 stitches and we are going to have a total of um, this is 14 1 84 that's the number of rows that we are going to do for our ribbing at the base of our jacket so whatever number you have whatever number of stitches you have at the base just total them up divide them by 2 get that number and then divide it by two and get the smaller number and add it to this number up here so for me it was 56 plus 28 which is a total of 84 and those are the number of rows that we are going to do at the base of our jacket so the starting part of the ribbing of the base is the same exact as the ribbing of the sleeve so nothing changes just go ahead and chain up 
10 and go into the second chain from the hook and place a single crochet all the way across and then uh, chain one turn and single crochet back loop only in each and every stitch and go ahead and do a total of 84 stitches all the way across 84 um, rows for your ribbing at the base or whatever number that you came up with after this this calculation so let me go ahead and show you what my uh, cardigan looks like my jacket so I lost the clip when I was attaching but I'm going to be explaining I'm going to be explaining so we have stitches on the sweater and then we have rows on the ribbing so we are going to be attaching one stitch onto the first row and then onto the second row the second row will get two stitches off the sweater so that's the flow of this uh, of the base of the jacket that's the only way you're going to achieve the bomber look so one stitch down one stitch attaches to the first row of the ribbing and then the second row of the ribbing will get two stitches off the sweater so you attach one and then the next stitch and then the next row gets one stitch then the next row gets two stitches so you're going to do that all the way across across your jacket and you should notice that it will create folds like that and that's what we want so I hope uh, I'm explaining it well enough for you to understand so one row one stitch second row two stitches the third row one stitch fourth row two stitches fifth row one stitch sixth row two stitches so you're going to do that all the way across your work at the base of the jacket and uh, this is what you'll come up with that's how your jacket will look like and then at this point I can say we're going to go ahead and get rid of all our loose ends all these chunks that, that are lying around because I wasn't cutting them you're going to get rid of all these loose strands so that we get a clean look and then uh, we shall come back to do the edging of our sweater at the front all the way up and all the way down so after getting rid of all my loose strands I decided not to put an edging uh, on this part of the sweater because I felt like it was neat enough and it, need, it didn't need any edging at all so I decided to leave it plain like this and this is how my sweater looked like and I'm going to be attaching photos for you to see all sides of this sweater of this jacket and I hope you guys learned a lot from this uh, tutorial thanks for watching I'll see you in my next video Bye.